through the portal of dreams. Cassandra always had vivid dreams, but never expected one to change her life. Her nights were filled with wondrous places and adventures. One night, as she drifted to sleep, she found herself in a place unlike any other she had dreamt of. A vast, shimmering lake stretched before her, its waters crystal clear and reflecting the starlit sky. Beside the lake stood an ornate, ancient archway with symbols engraved on its surface, glowing softly. Curiosity peaked, Cassandra approached the archway and, upon touching it, felt an electric pulse. The next moment, she was whisked away. She landed on soft grass, surrounded by a bustling market full of creatures and humans, trading various goods and sharing stories. The sun hung low in the sky, casting a golden hue. Cassandra realized this wasn't just any dream, it felt too real. She began to explore, weaving through stalls of enchanted items, talking animals, and aromatic food. A stall with beautifully crafted masks caught her eye. An old woman stood behind it, her eyes locking onto Cassandra's. Ah. You're new here, she remarked. Cassandra nodded, where am I? This, dear, is the market of midnight, a place where dreamers come to trade their most precious dreams. And you, she paused, you've come through the portal of dreams. Cassandra remembered the archway. How do I get back? The old woman chuckled, that's the fun part. You need to find something in this market that truly resonates with your heart. Only then can the portal take you back. Hours turned into days as Cassandra searched. She encountered a talking fox who spoke of ancient forests, a knight who traded stories of his quests, and a chef whose food could evoke memories. But nothing felt right. Desperation began to set in when she stumbled upon a small stall at the market's edge. A young man was playing a haunting melody on a flute. The music stirred something deep within her, memories of her childhood, days spent with her grandmother listening to tales and melodies of old. She approached the young man, your music reminds me of my grandmother. He smiled, this flute carries the memories of those who played it. Your grandmother might have visited this very market in her dreams. Cassandra's eyes widened. She remembered a flute in her grandmother's attic, just like this one. Can I trade something for it? The young man nodded, handing her the flute. It's yours. May it guide you back. Grasping the flute, Cassandra played a tune her grandmother had taught her. As the notes filled the air, the world around her blurred. The market, the creatures, the stalls, all started fading away. She woke up in her bed, the morning sun streaming in. Beside her lay the flute, tangible proof of her incredible journey. Cassandra realized dreams weren't just figments of imagination. They were gateways to incredible adventures. Cassandra cherished her dreams from that day, knowing they were doors waiting to be opened. And the flute stayed with her, a bridge between reality and the magical world she had discovered. She would play a tune every night, waiting for the next adventure to begin. Echoes from a distant starlight Nathan was an avid stargazer. Each night, he would position his telescope on the balcony of his suburban home, searching the vast expanse of space for something new. But this night was different. The evening began like any other. The moon was a thin crescent, and the stars shone brightly. As Nathan adjusted his telescope, he noticed a twinkling light that seemed out of place. Focusing on it, he realized it was not just any star, but pulsating rhythmically. Intrigued, Nathan jotted down the star's coordinates and decided to do some research. 
to his surprise, there wasn't any record of a star in that location. This discovery was something entirely new. The next evening, as Nathan was observing the pulsating star again, he started hearing faint whispers. At first, he thought it was his imagination, but the whispers grew louder and clearer. They were not just sounds, but words, but not in a language he recognized. Determined to decode the mysterious messages, Nathan began recording the whispers each night, spending his days attempting to decipher them. After weeks of tireless work and cross-referencing with numerous linguistic databases, he translated a few phrases. They spoke of a dying civilization, a plea for help, and coordinates to their home planet. The realization hit Nathan like a bolt of lightning. The pulsating star was not just a celestial body, but a beacon, a transmitter of a message from a distant civilization seeking aid. But the coordinates didn't point to any known planet or star system. Instead, they pointed to a region of space where, according to scientists, there was only emptiness. The realization was both fascinating and terrifying. Was it possible that the message he was receiving was not from the present, but from the distant past? Were these echoes from a civilization that had long vanished? Nathan reached out to an old university friend, Clara, who was now a renowned astrophysicist. Sharing his discovery, he showed her the translated messages and the coordinates. Initially skeptical, Clara's interest peaked as she analyzed the data. Together, they hypothesized that the pulsating star was a remnant of a supermassive star that had gone supernova millennia ago. Due to their intense magnetic fields, the remnants acted as transmitters, relaying the last messages of a civilization that lived on a planet orbiting that star. The discovery was groundbreaking. Nathan and Clara presented their findings to the global astronomical community, revealing the existence of a previously unknown civilization. The whispers from the pulsating star soon became a worldwide sensation. People from all walks of life tuned in to listen to the echoes from the distant starlight, a humbling reminder of the vastness of the universe and the transient nature of existence. While Nathan and Clara's discovery did not lead to contact with an extraterrestrial civilization, it did change humanity's perspective on its place in the cosmos. The universe was full of stories, all one needed was to listen. The pulsating star's messages may have been echoes from the past, but they held a promise for the future. The vast expanse of space was no longer seen as an empty void, but as a canvas filled with tales of civilizations that once were and those waiting to be discovered. Dance of the Celestial Fireflies Every decade, in the small village of Lumina, a spectacle attracted visitors from all corners of the world. It was said that on one specific night, the skies would come alive with what looked like thousands of fireflies, but with an almost ethereal luminance. Lara had heard tales of this phenomenon ever since she was a child. Her grandmother used to recount stories of the last time the celestial fireflies danced, painting vivid pictures with her words that made Lara's young heart race with excitement. Now, as a young adult, the year had come again for the celestial event, and Lara was determined to witness it firsthand. The village buzzed with anticipation. Tourists filled every inn and camped in open fields. With their telescopes and equipment, scientists hoped to decipher the mystery of the celestial fireflies. Artisans sold paintings and crafts inspired by the event and children ran around with jars, hoping to capture a firefly. The night of the spectacle finally arrived. The sky was clear, and a gentle breeze swept through the village. Lara climbed up a hill, which gave an unobstructed view of the heavens. She spread a blanket and lay down, 
ice fixed on the vast expanse above. As midnight approached, the first of the celestial fireflies appeared. Initially, they were faint pinpricks of light, almost indistinguishable from the stars. But as minutes turned into hours, their glow intensified, and they began to move. The fireflies danced in mesmerizing patterns. Spirals, waves, and synchronized movements that were so intricate and complex, it felt as though the entire universe was putting on a choreographed performance. The lights varied in colors, from intense blues to soft purples, vibrant greens to fiery oranges. Lara was spellbound. She felt a deep connection, an almost magnetic pull towards the lights. It was as if the dance of the celestial fireflies was not just a visual performance, but a symphony that resonated with the very core of her being. She wasn't alone in her feelings. All around her, people were entranced, some with tears streaming down their faces, others lying still in quiet contemplation, absorbing the moment's beauty. The dance went on for hours. And then, as dawn began to break, the celestial fireflies started to fade, their dance slowing down, their luminance dimming. By the time the first ray of sunlight hit the village of Lumina, the fireflies had vanished, leaving the sky as it was, but the people's hearts forever changed. Lara descended the hill with a sense of contentment she had never felt before. The tales her grandmother had told her, which had ignited her imagination as a child, almost magically came to life. Years later, as an old woman, Lara would sit on the same hill, her grandchildren around her, recounting the night she witnessed the dance of the celestial fireflies. And even though the next spectacle was still years away, the memory was as vivid as if it had happened just yesterday. The celestial fireflies danced eternally in the hearts of the people of Lumina, a testament to the universe's infinite wonders.